I did it. <laughs> Man. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, yes, I did chop off my hair. Um, and I have gotten a lot of questions on um my, actually wait i have a list so list of questions so um i've gotten why i cut off my hair obviously um why now is everything okay like are you okay um <laughs> like what's you just started a youtube channel so what's like you know what are you gonna do now um and i've also gotten you're gonna lose subscribers even though that's not a question i've gotten that before it's really funny um, so yeah, I'm here to answer all those questions. Also, I did record the whole experience that I got going to the salon and um, I've gotten a lot of information and curly hair tips as well from my hairstylist Caroline. So if you guys would like to watch that experience and also know um, the tips I've gotten, then stay tuned. All right, so let's answer this question, okay? Number one. Why'd you cut off your hair? I've actually been thinking about chopping off my hair since junior year of high school, okay? And I did, I did attempt. So this is what I did, okay? So before my hair used to, like when it was straightened, it would be um, down to my butt, but then I, um, I cut it halfway, okay? Just to see how I would react to it and how I would feel about it. And so it, I cut it up to my chest and when it was curly, it went up to here and I just felt so naked. I was like, nope. So that didn't go well. So yeah, I just let it grow out. And I wanted like, I wanted, okay. So the plan was when I go to college, I will go to a different state, you know, new me, you know, new place. And yeah, I just wanted something different. So that's why I wanted to try it back then. But then the reason why I did it now though, is because like, okay, don't get me wrong. I love talking about hair. I can talk about hair all day okay but i just noticed that the conversations that i be having with people even with like my friends it's just like it just went down to only hair you know like that's that's the only thing i talk about and like okay for example someone will come up to me and be like hey Salim, you look really pretty i really like your hair what do you do to it i give her the tips and even if a guy would ask and like i'll give them like i'll tell them like what i do to it and then that'll just be the end of the conversation. And I'll talk about, you know, I can't talk about them because they're already gone. They don't ask me about me and that's just it, you know? So I was just like, okay, so the distraction is the hair. So I'm just gonna take the distraction away, you know? So yeah, that's really like the main, main reason why I decided to do it, especially now. So that's the first question. So let's go to number two. Hmm. I think I think I said why now I forgot um, I guess I think I, I answered in the first one so I think the third question is I should have this down. <laughs> um, third question is um, oh are you okay yes yes I'm okay I am totally okay my you know my life is good I'm definitely good I am mentally good now so we're all good <laughs> and the last question no, it's actually it's not a question. It's it's a statement um, that I'm gonna lose subscribers. I hope that I'm not gonna lose subscribers. I know I've mentioned this before that my YouTube channel is not only about hair. It's um, you know faith based hair and beauty. So um, there's more to it. So I don't think I would lose subscribers. <laughs> um, and yeah, the reason why though that I have not like. Put out videos of like faith and beauty and all that is just because i was planning on starting my youtube channel with just like after i chopped off my hair and all that but i get a lot of questions on um you know my hair and how i do it and all that so i was like you know it might be helpful if i just like start with that so every time i get asked about it i could just like refer the video and then you know people can know um people can get the information that they wanted um, instead of me just telling them they could actually see it, you know, so I pre-recorded every um, Tutorials that would require me to have long hair and then yeah, and so I just posted that weekly and um, Now I revealed that I have short hair, you know, I chopped it all off also Y'all like I'm not I'm not just throwing my hair away. Okay. I'm gonna be <laughs> donating it it's right here I'm gonna be um, mailing it to um, organizations that give 
um, hair to kids with cancer, so just FYI. But yeah, so going back to my point, um, I, I pre-recorded everything and then I, um, I posted that weekly, so now I'm super excited that I can finally post other videos. I even want to talk about what God has been teaching me and I've gotten some comments from people that want to see my skin routine and I mean, I didn't really think it was like that much, but if y'all want it, y'all go have it. So I'll do that as well. So, so with all that being said, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Keep on watching if you'd like to know how I went from this hair to this hair. Okay, I have a question about like oils. Okay. Yes. Um, are like oils bad for your hair? <sighs> it's complicated. Overuse of oils, yes. Moderate, sort of, you know, measured use of oils is perfectly fine. What do you mean like measured use of oils? Moderate means if you are using an oil like in small amounts as like a little bit of an extra, you know, bit of scalp, scalp yeah. maybe a tiny bit at the ends once the hair is dry, for like just a little bit of seal, like that, that's fine, it's no big deal. If you're using it as your conditioner, if you're doing like frequent like deep conditions with it, that is, it's not so much that it's damaging, it's just it's not giving the benefit that you think it's getting. Because so it don't do your mask with oil. It's not doing what, what, it doesn't have that ability to kind of go into the hair the way that you think it is, it's too macro. You, you want something when you're doing a deep treatment that is just more broken down that can kind of get a little subcuticle and go to work which is why oils are really good for the skin because we have a lot of layers in our skin but the hair is only so much so it's more just like too much of a good thing kind of a situation okay so like i i don't use oil on my hair but i use oil on in my scalp before mm -hmm. i start like um anything that's you know, okay. Like that's, yeah. fine. that's fine. Like I said, it's more like when if somebody comes to me and they say that like their styler is coconut oil, their conditioner is coconut oil. Like yeah. that's you're lacking a mullion, like something that can actually like, get in there and like really soften the cuticle. Okay. All right. You ready? Yeah. Once you cross that threshold, it's, I'm telling you, it's like you feel air on your neck. I swear, it's like, like <laughs> nothing's going to be me. Nothing's going to be my shoulders anymore. I mean, yeah. the, the only the only thing is that there is some silicone in there. Okay. If you have your hair being shorter, buys you a little bit more freedom, so you can get away with using something that is not quite as water soluble because you just have hair that just kind of doesn't hang on to things as, as easily. I mean, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world to use. I. I mean, I have my preferences. I like what I like, you know. Yeah. I mean, I stand behind Diva Pro. It's amazing brand, but I yeah. get it. And it's it's a lot to invest in products, but a little bit of a leave-in is you're fine. You're gonna be fine. You're not ruining anything. Yeah. You're good. 
believe the only reason the crown of your hair is like drier because it's more exposed to the sun. Nope. That's part of it, but it actually has to do with the growth pattern. So in the back of everyone's head is this area that's called the moral. Yeah, it's a circle thing. Yeah. And because all the hair that's growing out of it is on a super tight, twisty turn, the follicle openings are very irregular. And so what happens is, is that as the hair comes out, it just kind of does like this more so than like that. So that once everything kind of evens out and you're more like on planes, mm -hmm. then you start getting a pattern emerging. Yeah. It's a very, very, very common trait. Everyone has it, but when you have a tighter curl, it's much more noticeable. Simply because it just realizes itself so much differently. So that's why it's dry as well? Yes, because when you have basically an area that there's a lot of little grooves and stuff, it's harder for the cuticle to kind of open up and relax. And that really is what determines moisture, is your cuticle's ability to kind of accept it right. and retain it. Which is why when you have a lower porosity, it's harder to obtain moisture because the cuticle just is a bit tighter. It doesn't want to kind of open up. It's not a bad thing, it just is. You just kind of work with it. Okay, so when I wash my hair, I wash it with warm water. Okay. And then I kind of like rinse the conditioner out by cold water. Perfect. Yeah. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Textbook. <laughs> Warm water opens it up, cold water closes it down. As long as it's not boiling lava hot. Worth. This is one condition decadence, kind of blazing over lightly. And even though the curls are still short, it's good just to kind of break them down with your fingers. You just kind of go through section by section, kind of walking your fingers through all the way to the root, getting like a nice, smooth, kind of a ribbon of a curl going in. What I like to do is if I'm being like really, really thorough, is once I have my section finished, I can take a clip. You just clip it off to the side and then start my other one. Okay. Kind of go through this like this. This is like super detail oriented, but honestly, your curls are short enough that you could just kind of very easily move it through. Mm -hmm. This method is going to give you a bit more of a refined curl. And if you kind of go more haphazard through, you have more of like an open tousled look. So actually, how you work with your conditioner can affect how the final process looks. So you kind of just have to massage it into the look. Mm -hmm. It's not like a glide, it kind of called like a press and a glide. There's a bit of tension, the fingers are pressed together. And just creating this really nice noodly curl. Okay, did you feel something like after you did the uh, build buster mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. Like when you were like um, rinsing out the uh, product? Mm -hmm. And like I felt like um, it's not like rubbery? You know? Yes. Like, yeah, what is that? That was the coating. That was on your hair. The coating? That we took off. So when you like let the, the hair do Yes. Okay. Yes. So that, as in like it's still on there or like it left? It's gone. It's the best part okay. of it. Yes. So that's a good thing? It's a good happens. thing. Basically, if you wet the hair down and there's a coating on it and you run your hands down it, it's going to kind of have that rubbery feel to yeah. it. Build a Buster basically gets rid of what's causing that kind of a gumminess to it. So basically, if you run your hands through your hair like now, it's very, very soft. There isn't any something kind of in the way of it. Yeah.
All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys kind of got a few more tips and tricks on curly hair. And if you guys have um, questions, or comments, and all that, you know, comment down below. You can also DM me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. All that is in my description box. So, yeah. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs> Bye.